they have come actually to the horizon of the world, to that domain beyond which human experience, human consciousness does not go. And in each of the four directions, that, uh, that circumference, that guarding circle, is guarded by a direction guardian, a door guardian, a portal guardian. And in the Navajo mythology, this one, who is the one in the east, uh, in the north, is called White Sands Boy. He has very long arms, as you can see. And with those long arms, he takes people and plunges them head down in the sand and smothers them to death. So the boys have come against a pretty dangerous character here. Well, instead of uh, being afraid, or instead of resisting him, they give him praise. They say, oh, beautiful, wonderful White Sands boy, uh, do let us pass. We are going to our father, the son, to obtain weapons and power to slay the monsters and save the people of the world. And White Sands boy says, well, very well. He is quite flattered by the praise they've given them. So he says, well, go ahead, pass on. And so they do pass on. And they come then to an absolutely desolate area. You see, they've gone past all phenomena of uh, normal life experience. And so this is, as it were, just a waste, an empty void. And as they're going along, they uh, see coming out of the ground a certain smoke. And this is coming from the little uh, burrow, the little uh, subterranean home of a very important figure in Navajo mythology an old crone whose name is Spider Woman. Now, uh, she is like the fairy godmother in the fairy tales who gives uh, heroes uh, magical charms and advice to help them through the journeys. And that's just what Spider Woman does in this case. Um, the boys go and look down the hole. Of course, there's a little ladder coming up. And, uh, and she calls up, uh, who are you, little boys? Come on down in. So down they go. And she says, well, how did you get out here? And they said, well, we're on the way to our father, the son, to get weapons to save our people and our mother from the monsters. Well, she says, you can't go <coughs> to your father, the son. That's, that's a very difficult journey. You can't do that. And they said, well, we're going anyhow. And uh, then she said, all right, I'll help you. So she told them what the problems were that they were going to face. And uh, among these, <coughs> were, there were three that were most important. There were the cactus that uh, cut, and the reeds that pierced, and the, uh, the rocks that clapped together. Now, this motif of the clashing rocks, which are called the Symplegades, is one that we'll see in the Greek story, too, uh, of uh, my next talk. Uh, it's a common motif. And when it is interpreted in a sort of metaphysical, psychological way, what it represents is the pair of opposites coming together, good and evil, light and dark, and we've got to go between. And it's only a, a mystical insight that carries you through them. And it comes when they are open and closed again. And only those who are there at the right moment have the right pitch of thought, you might say, are those capable of going through. Well, now, said Spider-Woman, uh, those are your problems, and uh, I'm going to give you something to protect you. And she gives them a charm to recite, and she says, hold this feather close to you. And so now here we have the reeds that uh, pierce and the cactus that cuts, and here is the feather. And the, uh, clapping, uh, uh, the, the uh, clashing rocks are between, but they're not represented here, and it may be that they were not represented because the power that they carry is too great. Actually, in presenting these uh, materials to white people for preservation in the museum at Santa Fe, the great Navajo museum there, uh, the Navajo would leave out always one element from the picture, lest there be too much power in the picture. Uh, I remember there was one occasion when a group of uh, the sand painting medicine men were in New York at the Modern Art Museum. And we actually could see them making the pictures. Uh, they made uh, one very, very beautiful picture. And again, they had left out <coughs> uh, an important detail. 
And I remember uh, they were asked by the director of the museum, uh, wouldn't you just complete this, this uh, one time so that we could see what it's like when it's a uh, total picture? And they said, no, if we were to put this element in, uh, every woman on Manhattan Island would be pregnant tomorrow morning. And they, they did believe this. There is a real belief in the power of these things. And you can see uh, what kind of power it is and how we're being protected by having the uh, element left out. So probably in, this, the, in the center there, the, where the uh, clashing rocks were to have been, they have been omitted. In any case, these are the obstacles the boys had passed. Now, always in mythological traditions, when you go past the realm of normal human experience, there is this series of tests of mounting terror. And that's what our boys have to face. Now they come <coughs> to the ocean that surrounds the world. And that's what you see here, the ocean that surrounds the world. And there are the four mountains of the four colors uh, uh, over the waters there, which shows that we have gone uh, around the, the whole cosmos and are now uh, going beyond. Uh, you can see their footsteps as they go past. And they're on their way now to the house of their father, the sun. <laughs>